Now that we have the user accounts a little bit more secure, let's turn our attention to the system settings. Uh, let's run the Raspi config utility uh, with actually sudo raspi config and press enter. So now we need to enter the password for our account, which has sudo permissions. Okay, so note that some of these steps uh, that I'm about to go through may indicate that a re reboot is required. Uh, you can ignore the prompt for a reboot and reboot when I do. Or if you would prefer, you can go ahead and reboot as prompted. Uh, so there are six tasks that we need to complete in this utility. Uh, the first task, we will change the host name. I am going to set the host name to baseline here. Uh, so let me get into this option. Just say OK here. So as you can see, the default host name is Raspberry Pi. And I'm going to change this to baseline. In the future, when I start a new project, I will most likely flash a new micro SD card and put it into another Raspberry Pi. So when I start that Pi, I will already know what the host name is. I can then go in and change the host name to reflect the project I will be using the Pi for. Um, I'll talk more about this at the end when I talk about new project setup tasks. So then tab down, hit OK, and that part is done. So the second task, uh, we are going to resize the file system uh, so that Raspbian can see the entire available space of the micro SD card. And we're going to go down to advanced options. Uh, by default, the size of the storage partition will be whatever amount of space uh, was required to flash the Raspbian image to the micro SD card. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Okay. Did see an error message there, but I do believe that it completed successfully. So the next thing that we are going to do, since we're creating this secure baseline setup image uh, for projects where a graphical user interface most likely will not be needed, uh, we're using the Raspbian Lite install, uh, which doesn't have a GUI by default. You can add one later if you need to. Uh, but because Raspbian doesn't have a GUI, uh, we can reallocate the RAM that would have been used for a a graphical user interface. So we'll go down to advanced options and then we'll choose the option for memory split. So as you can see here the default amount of RAM that was applied to the GPU uh, by default is 64 megabytes. So I am going to take this all the way down to 16 megabytes, which is the lowest amount that we can give it. And I'm going to hit OK. So fourth task, um, I need to change the locale. So I'm going to go into the localization options. And I'm going to change the locale. And then I'm going to go through this list, this tiny little window. It'll probably take me forever to get there. But what I'm looking for is a section where the ENs start. I'm looking for en underscore us to start with. OK. 
Okay, getting closer, I believe. Yep, here we go. So this is the one I want. I'm just going to press the space bar to select it. I want en underscore us dot utf dash eight and then utf dash eight. I'm going to select that. Hit OK. And then I am going to set that en us as the default. Okay, so that takes a little bit longer on the Pi Zero than it would on the Pi Three, but nonetheless, we'll move on. So the next thing I'm gonna do, the fifth task, is we are going to change the time zone. We're gonna go back into the localization options and change the time zone. So I'm in the US. And then I am in the mountain time zone. Okay, that was easy enough. So the final task, the sixth task, will be to uh, make sure that we enable SSH so that we can connect into the Pi remotely. So to do that, we actually go into the interfacing options. And then we go to SSH, and then it asks us if we would like to enable the SSH server and say yes. Okay, so the server is enabled. We can hit OK, and then we can finish out of this configuration. And now it's asking us if we would like to reboot. And um, yes, now is a good time to go ahead and do that reboot. So I will say yes.